Lead investigators in the West Mesa buried bodies case are keeping a close eye on developments on Long Island. APD admits there are some similarities between the Long Island case and the West Mesa case. Josh and I have traveled across the country following a trail of unsolved murders that we once believed could have been committed by one or two killers. Although we now know that idea to be false, we've come to realize these killings are still connected, just not in the way we all might think. Could this be connected to the 10 dead women found on the beach in Long Island? They were all prostitutes, although they were found in burlap sacks. This sounds eerily familiar. Two very large mass grave sites, both involving prostitutes. So then they automatically make that connection. Sex workers here and sex workers there, it must be the same person. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as we know, the truth is... That it's happening all over the it's country. It's happening everywhere. Mm -hmm. And nobody quite seems to understand it. That the public sees connections between West Mesa and Go Go Beach is not surprising. It's human nature to create connections, to draw patterns where there are none, so we can manage the fear that any one of us could be next. We look for patterns because it gives us insight into the motives of the killer, why they are committing crimes against a particular group of individuals, why the victims are who they are. And if we can connect the dots, then we'll say, OK, the risk is confined to this group. I am not a member of that group. Therefore, I am safe. We now know our cases aren't connected, but we wish they were. We wish only one or two twisted individuals were responsible for all these murders, rather than the real horror that there are hundreds of killers murdering an untold number of women and dumping their bodies across the country. After months of crunching homicide stats from all 50 states, data journalist Tom Hargrove is finally called to tell us what he's found. Hey, listen, I've uh, finished processing the, uh, the 2013 data. There are several very suspicious clusters of involving Donald Trump and Hillary We immediately head to D.C., still amazed that Tom and his team can connect killings that local police and the feds cannot. So now you've processed the 2013 data. We've assembled the 10-year arc from 2004 to 2013. In Cuyahoga County, Ohio, that's Cleveland, there were 31 women who were murdered. Only eight were solved. Yikes, since 2000, they've been solving 50% of the murders. This is the largest suspicious cluster uh, in the nation. Past experience indicates that probably most of these contain serial murders. Tom Hargrove's algorithm has identified 24 unsolved female homicides over a three-year period, suggesting a serial killer may be on the loose in Cleveland. So this is the first woman we came upon, Jasmine Trotter, 20, and was found under a porch. This is March 26, 2013. Trotter left her boyfriend's home at 5 a.m. Friday to walk to work. We looked in abandoned buildings, abandoned lots, and we came to this one home, and her purse was in the backyard. My nephew looked in the porch, and that's when he found her body. She was killed with blunt force trauma, strangulation. She was sexually assaulted. And she wasn't a sex worker. And she was going to work. It seems so strange that she was snatched and dragged into an abandoned house, and that seemed to be what happened with some of the other women. Right. First, Jasmine was found on the 23rd. Then Christina was found in between two and three days later. Just a few blocks away from where Jasmine was found. And just days later, residents would discover the body of Christine Malone, a grandmother of five. Somebody had beat her to death, beat her in blunt force trauma. In my mother's case, she was missing for a whole week. Right. Nobody done nothing, wasn't nothing on the news. And eight days after we reported her missing, she find, mm. turns up inside of a field. Another person at 5 o'clock in the morning right off this main street. Grabs her, drags her back to here. Look how far away we are from the road. 
So not very organized. Not at all. Hargrove's data pointed us to at least three cases of murdered women, all showing signs of blunt force trauma and all within a five mile radius around 93rd Street, two of which we were confident were connected. But we'd also uncovered two attacks in the same area and time with similar signatures. Of course, we can't be sure all these crimes were committed by the same individual, yet the pattern was there. And while the police weren't denying women were being attacked and murdered, they weren't saying much more. Have the police said that they think it's connected at all? No. And no one was saying the word serial killer. Sorry, Cleveland Division of Police Public Information Office is not available. But according to web sleuther Peter Brent, these were all signs of a much deeper problem. You have a population which is basically disenfranchised by the political, social climate. You have a system there that doesn't pay any attention if any potential serial killer would show any signs that something bad is about to happen. And you have a police department that competes for spot in the 10 most inept in the world. It's a perfect storm. But the point is that this serial killer is active. He is in Cleveland, and he is currently killing individuals. At least one. And nobody cares. And he kills happy alone. It's, it's an old problem when you, when you start to hunt for serial killers. Nobody cares. Nobody gives a damn. You're a parent or a sister or someone, you want something done now. And when I talk to uh, Ashley's mother, she's really frustrated. Yeah. Cause she just feel like she's just hitting her head against the wall. She's not getting a response from police, no detectives helping her, and she just feels lost. These families need justice and they need closure. Mm -hmm. You represent which district? I go from basically 93rd in Union back to 9030 miles. So that whole stretches me. You know, you may have an active serial killer. This is not something we're going to be able to, to, to whitewash, put underneath the rug. We're going to have to do something. First thing, and I'm glad you guys are doing this, the first thing we got to do is recognize we got a problem. We need more police solving these crimes because these individuals keep doing what they do until they get caught. In addition to having so many serial killers, Cleveland has another problem. Like Albuquerque, this police department is also being monitored by the Department of Justice for a staggering list of excessive force violations, severely limiting its ability to protect and serve. The city of Cleveland police officers not only don't do community policing, they don't even know how to do community policing. The belly of the beast is still in bad shape in these wards, in these communities, in these neighborhoods. It seems Hargrove is right. There is a serial killer stalking the streets of Cleveland, just like there was a serial killer stalking the streets of Albuquerque, the highways of Oklahoma City, the beaches of Daytona, the back alleys of Atlantic City, and the back pages of Long Island. We now know we can't solely rely on police anymore. The responsibility falls on us, all of us, to solve these crimes. The reality is we live in a broken system that because of bureaucracy, because of prejudice, fails to protect those who need our help most. There are our daughters, our sisters, our mothers, and our wives. To fix our failures, we must mandate that every victim be counted, every murder reported, and every agency be held accountable for sharing that data. Our loved ones are the victims, and no one has the right to withhold their information or deny them justice so that one day, this killing season will end. There are 
thousands of missing persons in our country. If you don't have law enforcement agencies working together, there is nobody trying to connect the dots. I am aware of other serial killers that I do know personally. Are any of these guys still out there? Yes, ma'am.